I am Amit Kumar Chauhan. I am presenting our work Quantum Free Start Collision Attacks on Double Block Length Setting with Round Reduced AES 256. This is a joint work with Abhishek Kumar and Sumitra Sanadhyay. Hash functions are an important and ubiquitous cryptographic building blocks that are used in designing message authentication codes, signature schemes, etc. In post quantum era, many public key schemes that use hash functions are proven to be secure in the quantum random oracle model. Recently, few works have also been studied, have also studied the dedicated attack on the block cipher based hash functions such as Whirlpool, Grostal in various quantum attack settings. Further, double block length hashing is a well established method for constructing a compression function with a 2 n bit output from n bit block cipher. For example, tandem DM, average DM, hero play function, etc. In this work, we study dedicated quantum collision attacks on hero safe compression function. Hero safe designed a DBL compression function F that makes two calls to an n bit block cipher E that produces the output as follows F on input S0, H1, M outputs d0 comma b1 using the function f0 and m1 where the functions f0 and f1 are defined as f0 on input h0 comma h1 comma m a equal to e of h0 joined with h0 where h1 concatenates an m1 is the key input to the block cipher similarly we define f1 how to find collision on scf so just uh, recall the fact from the Chenard paper, uh, uh, Chenard paper in 2014. Suppose that a collision for F0 is caused by the pair H0, comma H1, comma M, and H0 joe delta H0, comma H1, comma M. Further, assume that delta H0 equal to C. Then a collision for F1 is also caused by the same pair. So using the same fact, the goal of finding collision for SCF reduces to finding collision on F0, for which we can proceed as follows. So first. Find a colliding pair of inputs. Secondly, output the pair only if delta is 0 equal to C. Otherwise, return to step 1 and repeat the process. So, what are the generic methods to find collisions? So, for a concrete hash function H, the generic collision time attack complexity is big of 2 to the power n by 2 using per day bound. A dedicated collision attack is valid only if t less than 2 to the power n by 2. The dedicated method to find collisions generally uh, consider differential cup analysis uh, to find collisions, for example, MD5, Whirlpool, Hirose, etc. The idea behind is to build a differential trail such that non zero input difference delta in can propagate to a zero output difference delta out with a high probability. Typically, differential trails for hash function consist of two parts control part and uncontrolled part. Control part in which complex trail is efficiently satisfied by using degrees of freedom. Secondly, uncontrolled part where trail is satisfied probabilistically. Usually, controlled part is satisfied with negligible cost. So, the attack complexity is mainly dominated by the trail probability P of the uncontrolled part. So, the attack is valid if and only if T is equal to 1 by T. If and only if T is equal to 1 by by 2. Next, we discuss the quantum cryptanalysis analysis and quantum setting. So there are two kind of quantum attack models. One is Q1 model, other, uh, another is Q2 model. In Q1 model, adversary is allowed to make classical queries. Plus, he has also given the power of quantum computer. In Q2 model, adversary is allowed to make quantum queries. Plus, uh, he has also given the power of quantum computers. In general, Q1 model is more practical than Q2 model because for block cipher, it is hard to make quantum superposition query to the online encryption oracle while for the hash function we can make quantum superposition queries to the hash functions offline. So how to define quantum superposition queries? So let f be a boolean function. So the, the superposition oracle of f is the unitary transformation uf that acts on n plus 1 qubit system which sends a standard basis vector x by 2 x by z over fx. As a linear operator uf acts on the superposition states as u f on the summation of o, o over all the x, a x vector x vector 0 equal to the sum over all the x, a x x vector x and vector f of x. 
So uh, we can efficiently implement UF in the quantum circuit model as long as there exists an efficient classical circuit that computes UF. Quantum random access memory is QRAM uh, can also be seen as the can, can quantum analog of the classical RAM. Given a list of classical data L with vectors Xi of length M, the QRAM for L can be modeled as an unitary transformation such that uh, UQRAM on input address register uh, and the output register Y maps to input register address register i and output register by your xi. <coughs> Similarly, on the quantum superposition axis, we can define the uh, action of unity transformation u, q, r, and l. However, there are some problems of QRAM. It is unknown how a working QRAM can be built, or at least in case of large QRAMs. Secondly, a QRAM of size ON can be simulated with a quantum circuit of size big O of N, that is, size of QRAM equivalent to the number of qubits in the circuit to attack with a small QRAM or even without QRAM are actually more practical. Next, we discuss Gower's algorithm, which we use extensively in our work. So, given a search a space of 2 to the power n element and a Boolean function f, the goal is to find x such that f of x is n. In the classical setting, we need about 2 to the power n squared. But in the quantum setting, Grover's algorithm needs about square root of 2 to the power n Grover iteration. Quantum differential cryptography. So Kaplan and Tor observed that, that there exist delta x and delta y such that p equal to probability of e k of f dot with e k of, e of x dot delta x equal to delta y. So one can find such an x using Grover's algorithm in square root of 1 by p time with quantum computers. Classically, one can find such an x in 1 by p time. So, therefore, we can have a quantitative speed of for differential cryptanalysis in the quantum setting. In the quantum setting, differential cryptanalysis based attack is valid different only if p equal to square root of 1 by p. Uh, in case of generic methods, for example, BSP, the time and query complexity is 2 to the power n by 3, but the number of qubits required is very very large 2 to the power n by 3 in this setting attack is valid if p is greater than 2 to the power minus 2 n by 3 now we discuss our results so we apply a quantum version of rebound attack to find collisions on Hiroshi's compression function when the underlying block cipher is instantiated with aes 256 our rebound attack covers 10 round of STF AS256 in the quantum attack setting. Our dedicated quantum collision attacks are actually faster than generic quantum collision attacks, even when a small QRAM or no QRAM is available. Third, our attacks are also valid in the setting of time space trade-offs. We also propose a MILP based method to systematically explore different ways for rebound attacks with multiple inbound switches. Rebound attack is based on differential cryptanalysis. It, it divides the cipher into three parts, outbound phase one, inbound, and outbound, when, outbound phase two. In inbound phase, we perform a match in the middle to generate the starting point. In the outbound phase, from a starting point, we compute forward and backward directions uh, in the outbound phases. We also remark that if the probability of the outbound phase is P, one has to get at least one by P starting points in the inbound phase with p greater than 2 to the power minus n by 2. The assumption here is that that delta x input different delta x in the inbound phase propagates to delta 0 with probability p1 and output different delta y in the inbound phase propagates to delta 0 with probability p2. The delta 0 is matches with probability p0 so therefore uh, the differential probability of the trail becomes p1 into p2 into p0. We can use this uh, uh, idea of rebound attack to find collisions. So we fixed uh, delta x and delta y. Then where delta x prop uh, propagates to delta 0 with probability p1 and delta y propagates to delta 0 with probability p2. We then compute uh, uh, x and x dash from delta x 
and by and by dash from delta, from delta y that satisfy this inbound differential and then we compute m from x p from y f, m dash from f dash and c dash from y and finally check if m dot m dash equal to c dot c dash in the outbound phase classically we need to try uh, about uh, 1 by p out times uh, to have a match but in in quantum setting we need to try 1 over square root of p out times so here is this uh, 10 out differential trail for as 256 so here this round 3 round 4 we have in one phase 1 in round 6 and 7 we have in one phase 2 in round 5 we connect these two in one phases and from uh, this delta 6 7 we move to round 10 uh, with probability to the power minus 16 from z3 delta z3 we move to round 1 with probability to the power minus 16 and we also have the probability of eight white cancellation in f and w12 which is 2 to the power minus 64 so the overall probability of the differential trail is 2 to the power minus 96 we then use this trail to mount the bound attack on hs es256 that the transfer pair of collide mean put h0 comma h1 comma m and h0 0 delta h0 comma h1 comma m we also need a condition delta h0 equal to c to have a complete attack on hs es256 Where we consider C has eight non-zero bytes at some particular positions, and this can be achieved with probability two to the power minus sixty-four. Therefore, the overall complexity of the attack is two to the power one sixty. Now we give uh, the quantum collision attack using rebound uh, procedure. Uh, in uh, our attack, the rebound attack. Uh, has multiple inbound phases so for the first inbound differential uh, delta in one delta out one be the input output difference for the second inbound differential the input output difference pair is denoted by delta in two comma delta out two we then define a boolean function for the full inbound differential f for full the, the, the inbound differential h f such that f to 32 Cross f to 48, cross f to 48, cross f to 32 to f in a way such that f outputs one if and only if the starting points computed from the uh, uh, the input output difference and in the inbound phase fulfills the backward and forward output differentials. If f outputs one, we can produce two different colliding inputs and one colliding output such that S C F collides. Where h0 and h0 dash are obtained from the starting points, and h1 comma m is obtained from the key derived from connecting rounds uh, in inbound phases one and two. By applying Grover's algorithm with the quantum oracle UF for f, we can find a collision with uh, approximately pi by four into square root of two to the power one sixty square inch. To estimate the overall complexity of the attack, we need to. Uh, Find the exact complexity incurred by the implementation of UF. So, how to implement the quantum oracle UF? We uh, define a function di that computes the actual input-output data pair respecting the differential of each x box s by accessing the pre-computed DTT that is stored in QRAM. So, here in the algorithm in the implementation of UF, the input is This delta in one, delta in two, delta out one, delta out two, comma vector y, and output is basically y is updated with y j or f on input output differentials. So we perform uh, the in one phase one for i equal to zero to fifteen in uh, uh, the differential delta x at three delta w four and compute the corresponding differential. Then we run di, uh, which gives. Uh, the output x for i comma x for i or delta x for i. Similarly, in the inbound phase two, we com uh, com uh, get the output x seven i comma x seven i or delta x seven i. We then compute delta x five from delta w four and delta y six from delta z six. We connect these inbound phases one and two in round five. So uh, 
we run di4 each delta x5 to select the corresponding difference in delta y5. We compute delta x6 from delta y5. Then for j belonging to the positions 8, 9, and 15, we run dj on input delta x6j, comma delta y6j. If delta x6 and delta y6 are compatible, then we return the x6i, comma x6i, or delta xi as the output. And further, we output uh, x5i, comma x5i, or delta x5i corresponding output. We then compute the bytes of the x5. We also compute the bytes of k4 from the corresponding bytes of w4 and x5. Following the other details of the algorithm, we finally compute the round keys k0, k1, and so on, k10. We now create a starting point derived from the input output differences. First, we set x4 as x4 0 to x4 15, x4 dash as x4 0 your delta x4 0 to x4 15 your delta x4 15 similarly we set x7 and x7 dash now if x4 and x4 dash fulfills the backward output differential then we set one bit flag as 1 otherwise 0 if x7 and x7 dash fulfills the forward forward differential then we set one bit flag flag 2 is 1 otherwise we set flag 2 is 0 if both flag 1 and flag 2 is 1 then we update the output register as by your one, otherwise by remains invariant. Uh, for the complexity analysis of the attack, first, the complexity of the computation of the node IES is approximated by 200 across computation. Secondly, the complexity of one access to the QRAM that stores a table of input output differential is equivalent to one across computation. 1x to x goes evaluation further required to do the power minus 6.64 then down AES to 56 computations. So overall, by counting the S box evaluations, the complexity of UF is 2 to the power 5.46, then down AES to 256 computations. This x requires by by 4 into 2 to 2 to, 1, 2 to the power 165. So UF, the complexity of finding the collision is uh, approximately 2 to the power 80 point. 5.11 10 down AES to 56 computations. In summary, uh, we have uh, we considered two attack models. Uh, one is Q first, we have Q attack settings with QRAM, and Q second, we have Q attack setting without QRAM. So we just discussed the 10 down attack in Q first setting where the time complexity is to go 85.11 and the, the QRAM size is to be 16, which is required to store the digits is 7. Uh, in the Q2 setting, we do not use any QRAM, rather we access DTT using Grover's algorithm. So the, the complexity, time complexity of that edge is, is increased a little bit and it becomes 2 by 86.11. And in the TSTO setting, if we have a quantum computer of size available, edge available, then we can have uh, the attack with time complexity 2 by 88.61 over square root of x by 2 to the power 4. If we apply the the TLS algorithm uh, uh, generic of, on all the rounds, then the attack complexity is to the power 102.4. Uh, in conclusion, uh, the, the classical security of primitives does not imply quantum security. It also implies that different trails with the low probability in the classical setting can still be meaningful for quantum computers. We improved collision attacks for SPF AS256 to 10 round uh, in the quantum setting, while uh, in, in the classical setting there exists a nine round, uh, the attack on uh, up to nine rounds. Uh, as a future work, finding more useful differential tests with low probabilities in various other kind of attack techniques can be an interesting problem to investigate in the quantum setting. Thank you for your attention.